In this guide, I want to talk about how to set up SSH keys as a way of authenticating yourself when connecting to a server. And the advantage of using SSH keys versus another authentication approach such as uh, password authentication uh, is twofold. Advantage number one is just convenience. Once you have SSH keys set up, you don't have to enter a password every time you want to connect to your server. You don't have to remember a password. It's just much simpler. The second advantage is security. SSH keys are more secure than passwords because passwords are vulnerable to things like brute force attacks where a hacker might be using a program to basically try to guess your password. Uh, and if they do that enough times with enough iterations, uh, they can often be successful with that, depending of course on things like the strength of your password. Uh, but long story short, security and convenience, those are the two advantages we're going to get with SSH keys. So let's dig in. And the first thing to understand is just broad idea how SSH keys work. What's going to happen is you're going to generate a key pair. Uh, and a key pair is going to consist of two keys. You're going to have a private key and a public key. And I've got a visualization down here of what we're going to be aiming for. So on your computer or whatever system you're trying to connect from, you're going to have this private key. And then the corresponding public key from that pair will be installed on the server that you're trying to connect to. And then once that's set up, when you go to make a connection between your computer and your server using the SSH protocol, it's gonna look for these keys and it's gonna check that they match, right? And assuming that they match, that authenticates you because it shows that you have this private key on your system and you were able to install the corresponding public key on the server. Therefore, you have rights and access to that server. So as long as these two things match up, we can assume that you are a uh, appropriate user on the server and it's going to authenticate you and let you connect. Now, when I say match up, this is something that the SSH protocol is gonna be checking. Uh, if we zoom in on my graphic here and I have these example keys, uh, clearly they're not an exact match, right? The private key is about three times the size of the public key and all of the characters we're seeing are different, but we're not looking for an actual exact match here. Um, these are encoded values that the SSH protocol is gonna be able to decrypt and check that these are valid keys and that they were generated together and therefore connect. So that's the big picture of what we are looking for. Let's jump into the details on how we're gonna do this. And the first step is generating these keys. And how we're gonna do that is via command line through a series of commands. So if you're on Mac or Linux, you can uh, load your default terminal application to uh, engage with command line. If you're on Windows, I recommend something like git bash. Uh, any of the commands I'm gonna be covering should work there. Uh, and I do have links to videos on working in the command line. If this is something new to you, you can check the description for that. Uh, but assuming you're comfortable in command line, let's jump right in. Uh, and what I'm going to do, let me rearrange my window side by side. So we have the notes on the left we can refer to and we can run through the commands here on the right. All right, so step one is moving into a directory on your computer, the SSH directory. Uh, this is in your home directory, which we can get to via this uh, little tilde shortcut. So we're going to say change directory, we're going to go to the home directory, and we're going to go to this SSH directory. Uh, now for a lot of you, you should just be able to run that command as written, just paste it, and it should work. For some of you, this directory might not exist. And you'll find that out when you run it, because if you try to change into a directory that doesn't exist, you'll get a message uh, indicating that. Uh, and if that's the case, just simply create it. You can do that using the make dir or the make directory command. So you just copy this command as I've written it. And then once you've created it, you should be able to move into it. So now that we're in this directory, this is where we want to generate our key pair. And we're going to do that using this SSH key gen command. And at the very end, in quotes, we want to put some name for this key. Um, I'm going to call mine Susan's dash MacBook, just because that's where I'm creating this key. I'm creating it on my MacBook. Uh, you could call it whatever you want, um, but for the file name, just don't use any uh, spaces or special characters, things like at signs or dollar signs. Um, I am using a dash here just to represent a space, and that's fine. All right, so long story short, copy this full command, replacing Susan's MacBook with whatever identifier you want to use for your computer. And then go ahead and run that, and it's going to take you through a series of prompts for setting up this key pair. And the first thing is going to name or ask for is the name of the key pair itself. And by default, let me expand this window so we can see this better. By default, it's going to try to give it this name IDRSA. And you could leave it as that. Uh, if you don't type anything now and hit enter, it's just going to use that default name. Or you can come up with a custom name for it. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it a custom name and I'm going to call it Susan's MacBook. 
right? So very similar to this identifier I put up here. The difference is this is going to be the actual file name for the key, where this is just going to be an uh, identifier that's within the key itself. So they're similar. Um, here I just wrote it in all lowercase because that makes sense to me for file names. Uh, but same idea in terms of avoiding special characters, don't put like spaces in the name of it, um, things like that. All right, so I've got my file name there. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to then ask me for a passphrase. And I'm not going to enter a passphrase here. Um, you can, if you want to have like an additional level of security on your SSH keys, you can have a passphrase. But one of the reasons we're setting this up is having to avoid entering passwords when we use this. So uh, this is not an option I will typically go for. Uh, and even without this passphrase level added on top of the SSH keys, SSH keys are still extremely secure. Uh, so it's, it's not a measure that I think we need. If you're dealing with very high level security things, maybe you're building a, a, a website for a bank or something like that, then yeah, that extra level of security can be helpful. But for the average user, it's not necessary. So long story short, I'm going to leave this blank. I'm not going to enter a passphrase. I'm just going to hit enter. It's going to ask me to confirm that passphrase. And again, I'm not going to type anything, just hit enter. And then the end result is uh, it confirms that my key should have been ge uh, generated. And to confirm that, let's go ahead and list the directory contents. So I'm going to run the ls command. And you should see two files that correspond to the key information you just gave. So in my case, I see this file here called Susan's MacBook. This file without any extension, this is the private key. And then the corresponding public key should be under the same file name, and it'll have a .pub extension. All right, so two files you're looking for. It's a key pair. You've got your private key and your public key. Now, in my system, I have a bunch of other keys in here just from other work. Um, so what you're seeing on your end is going to look different than what I'm seeing, depending on if you've used SSH keys in the past. The main thing you're looking for here uh, is, again, just the, the creation of the keys based on what you just named them. Now, with those keys generated, the next step is we need to configure our SSH protocol to attempt to use these keys when we make connections. And specifically, we have to do that in instances where we do use custom key names. If you went with the default key name of IDRSA, you could skip the step that I'm about to show you because by default, SSH protocol will attempt to use that key. It's only if you've got a custom name, we just need to add a little extra config to tell it to use it. Uh, and if you're following along in the notes, this is the section down here under SSH config file. Uh, what we're going to do is within our SSH directory, we're going to edit or create a file called config. And that's just plain config. There's no extension on it. And we're just going to add a single line, giving it the path to the key that we just created. Um, now, in my case, obviously, config already exists. Um, if it doesn't exist on your end, you'll go ahead and create it. Uh, and the way you could do both of that is um, I'm just going to use the nano command. Nano is a very simple built-in uh, code editor within your command line. This will either open the existing config file if it exists, or if it doesn't, it's going to generate a blank file for you, which is what you need. So we'll say nano config. And as you can see in my case, I already have a bunch of configs in here. So I'm just going to add this at the top. Uh, if you already have existing configs, do the same. Add it at the top. If it's blank, we'll just add it at the top as well. And like I said, this is the line we want to add. So in my case, I'll just copy that, paste it in. And I don't need to make any edits, but you should edit this to match the name of your uh, key file. All right, once that's added, we want to save the changes. And in Mac, or in Nano rather, the way we do that is we hold down Control X. It's going to ask us if we want to save our changes. Type the letter Y, hit Enter, and there we go. That, that uh, file should be updated. And with that uh, complete, we can now turn our attention to the server that we're going to be trying to connect to. And what we need to do is we need to get a copy of this public key uh, placed on that server. And how you go about doing that is going to depend. Uh, if you're in a situation where you're creating a brand new server, sometimes server providers will offer a way to specify a key when you're creating the server that they will install for you. Um, and in fact, I have an example of that uh, open here. I've got the page for uh, a server provider called DigitalOcean. And this is their page for setting up and configuring a new server. And if we go all the way to the bottom under the authentication step, you can see there's an option for SSH keys. And down here, you could either add an SSH key that you already have uh, stored within your profile of DigitalOcean, or you could specify a new SSH key. 
Uh, and just as an example, let's say we want to take this uh, SSH key that we just generated and put it on a new server. This is how we would do it. We would say new SSH key. And then coming from our computer, we'd want to get the contents of this public key. So in my case, uh, a quick and easy way we could see this key is using the cat command, short for concatenate. It's just going to read the contents of the file to our output. All right, so there's our public key. So we could copy this starting with SSH RSA, grabbing all the long encrypted characters, and then ending with that identifier we had given this key. We can copy that, paste it in. You can give it a name. So I'm just going to name it Susan's MacBook.pub because that's uh, essentially what we're, we're pulling in here is the contents of that file. And then we could say add SSH key. And then uh, we can make sure that that's checked off. All right. And in this example, um, I'll actually go ahead and create this uh, server to show that we're able to connect to it. Um, I don't want to add this other key. This is a key I use for other things. So I'm going to uncheck that and just make sure that this key that we just created is going to be added. And like I said, when DigitalOcean sets up the server for us, it's going to install the key on that server. Uh, so give me a moment. I'm going to come to the back of the screen or the top of the screen and quickly just fill in the other options for the server that I'm generating here, just so we have this full example. I'm going to create a basic LEMP server. Um, I'm going to be destroying this afterwards, so um, I'm just going to get the cheapest plan they have. And because I'll be destroying it after, I, I really won't actually be paying for this. Um, choose a data center or SSH keys. That's all set up. I don't need any of these additional options. And uh, I'll just call it demo. And then I'll go ahead and let them create it for me. So I'll give a few moments for this server to propagate. And that's all set up. So let's copy the IP address for this new server. And then coming back to command line, we're going to attempt to log into the server. We're going to do this using the SSH protocol. So we'll start with the SSH command. Uh, we need to uh, specify what user we want to log in as. And by default, all the servers created on DigitalOcean are set up with a root user. So that's the username I'm going to use in this example. And we're just going to say root at the IP address of the server. And the first thing we will see is this message uh, basically saying we're connecting to this IP address for the first time. Are you sure that you trust it and you want to connect to it? So we're going to type in yes and hit enter. And if we did everything correctly with setting up our SSH keys, we should just get logged into the server. And you could see that happened here. We now see this prompt is no longer reflecting our local computer. It's now reflecting the server that we're connected to. And you'll note in that entire process, I didn't have to enter a password to connect to the server. All of the authentication was happening behind the scenes with our SSH keys via that SSH protocol. So with that, that covers the example of uh, establishing an SSH key pair with a brand new server in a situation where your hosting provider uh, allows you to essentially pre-install keys at when it creates the server for you. But let's say you're in a different scenario. Let's say you already have a server, you've had it for years, uh, and you want to establish an SSH key connection with it. How do you get your public key installed on that server? Well, the answer is there's a configuration file on your server called authorized keys where you can add new keys. And just to see that, let's go ahead and open up that file on this server. So I'll use nano for this. And the path to this is going to be in our SSH directory. And the file name is just authorized keys. And in this example, what we see there's already a public key in this file. And this key should look familiar because this was the key that we prompted DigitalOcean to add for us when we created the server. In fact, I'm going to jump to the end of the line here just so we can see the end. And there's that identifier we had given for this key. Uh, in my case, it was Susan's MacBook. All right, so all we have to do to authorize uh, new keys on any given system is we just have to paste in those keys into this authorized key file. And just to make sure it's clear on what that would look like, let me open up a new tab in my command line window. So I'm back on my local computer in this tab. Um, I'm currently in my local computer's SSH directory. And let's say, imagine I hadn't had DigitalOcean add my key for me and I wanted to add it. What I would do is I would just find the public key that I wanted to add, get the contents of that key. And again, we could just use the cat command for that. And I would want to copy that entire key. And then coming back to where I'm currently logged into the server and accessing that authorized key file, I would just paste that there. And then uh, let me jump to the beginning of this line here. Now I would have two keys within this file. So both of these keys uh, would have access to the server. Now in this case, I just did the same exact key that already had access. So that 
is redundant and it's not necessary. But I just wanted to show that process of what it would look like to just add new keys to this file. You just put one key right after the other. Um, I am going to delete that. So let me just get rid of that line. I just want to have this one key have access for right now. So go ahead and save my changes, which again, in Nano, we'll start with the keyboard shortcut Control X, type Y for yes, hit enter, and those changes should be saved. So that's the process in a nutshell of adding new authorized keys. You just add them to this authorized key config file. Uh, the question is though, or the thing to consider is that in order to access this authorized key file, you have to have access to the server. All right, and in this case, obviously I was able to do that because I already had an SSH key installed for me by the provider. But let's say that wasn't the case. Let's say this server had been created years ago. I had never set up SSH keys with it. How would I get in to add or edit this file and add my keys? Well, there's a few different ways. Um, one way might be if I hadn't been previously working with SSH keys, I was probably logging into the server via a username and a password. So I would just do that. I would log in with my username and password like I usually would. Then once I was logged in, I could edit the authorized key file, add my SSH key, and then moving forward, I should be able to log in without adding a, or without using a username and password. Um, another option might be, um, let's say I have another computer that did have SSH access and I'm trying to set up a new computer that would have access to the server. I could just log in under that uh, existing computer that already has access, add the key for the new computer to my authorized key file, and then both systems would have access to the server. And then finally, let's say it's a server where I didn't know what the username and password was to log into that server. I didn't have access that way. Another thing you can often do if you go to your hosting provider, sometimes they'll provide a way to access the server from the hosting provider's control panel. Uh, and just as a demonstration of that, I'll show you this in DigitalOcean. I'm gonna go to this demo server I had created. And then from within my settings here, I have an option to access a console. And that's gonna open up this new window that's gonna connect me to my server and give me this command line prompt. So once I have access to this, I could go in via Nano and edit that authorized key file. All right, and you can see at this point, this uh, key file has actually been updated. So the first line is the uh, SSH key file from my computer that was added when we created the server. And then these other lines look like new SSH keys that DigitalOcean has added, probably just to give me this console access that we're looking, uh, looking at right now. So you can see added and managed by DigitalOcean droplet agent. So like I said, I have a feeling just the fact that we're loading the console, it's adding these keys and that is what's giving us access. All right, so what I would want to do um, is just go to the end of this file, paste in whatever key that I'm adding from whatever system, uh, save those changes, and then moving forward, I should have access from that system. Um, in this case, I don't want to add new keys here, so I'm just going to exit out of Nano, and then I can uh, close the console. So in summary, you have a few different options for adding new SSH keys. Uh, and just to recap this, if we go back to the notes that accompany this video, I've uh, summarized that down here. These are three different ways you could get access to your server to add new keys, either log in via password, log in from a computer that already has SSH access, or finally, if your uh, hosting provider offers it, you can log in via a web console.